Welcome to Wrenchers in Motion, where if it ain't broke, I ain't buying it. And today, well, it's not really so broke, but let's take a look at this pile, shall we? So what we've got is a 2000 Ford Ranger. But, uh, let's look at this rust bucket here. This is a two-wheel drive XLT. No, it's not even an XLT. I don't even know if it's an XL. It's just a, a plain... Uh, let's look at the outside first. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of, uh, as they call, weight reduction. The bed. Moves a little bit. Got a little bit of rust on her there. Um, but the frame's not cracked, which is one thing you want to look at with these. Um, back tires are fairly good. Tailgate's in really good shape. Bumper's pretty good. Um, this side, once again, you get the... Uh, Weight reduction. Ugh, I couldn't even kick it. Flapping bed. Cab corners, yeah, they don't exist. Uh, front fender thing, it's kind of gone. <laughs> uh, taking a look uh, at this tire. And it's pretty bald. I took it for a, a little test drive. And I noticed it was shaking really bad. And then, uh, oh, look at this one. Yeah, this is a good spot. I moved it since I found, uh, there's a really bad spot of cord showing through. So what I'm going to do is go to the junkyard today, see if I can get a couple used tires and uh, get them swapped out. I had to put a battery in it because, of course, everything you buy nowadays, uh, the batteries are dead. I don't know what the deal with that is. So take a look inside. Fairly clean. Of course, you got the roll-up windows like most Rangers. Um, you see the grass in there because I cut the grass and I forgot to roll the window up. But we got the vinyl seats, which are actually not in really bad shape. Um, got Pioneer head unit. And take a look at the miles. 124. So that's the reason I bought this, was for the engine and transmission and any other parts I can get is a bonus. Um, look at that dome light. Usually those are all broke up. Okay, so I bought it for the motor and transmission. Um, I'll take the taillights out, take the uh, bumper off. I doubt I'm going to be able to get the spare down. I think that's going to be a permanent part of the truck. Um, I might keep the bed liner, if nothing else, just to throw parts in. Um, the hood's aluminum, so I'll probably keep that for something. But other than that, the rest of it's pure junk. Oh, and the rear end. It's got the 8.8 .8 rear end with the 410 gears. Unfortunately, it's not a posi or a limited slip. It's just a regular open diff, but still got the 410 gears. So I might be able to sell that too. Um, oh, I forgot the keys. All right, let me go get the keys, pop the hood, and uh, we'll check this thing out. All right, so here we are. Oh, let's look under the hood real quick before we start it. Um, he told me it was a three, a four liter, and it's a three liter, which is fine. Um, I had to put a new battery in it, of course, like I said. Um, and actually, the AC even works, which is not what I was expecting, but uh, it's got the typical Ford. Um, don't try to read the buttons because we're just going to melt in the sun. Listen to that.
I can't tell if that's the alternator or maybe the tensioner. Something's making a little squeak. Oh, that's empty. Uh, let's shut it down real quick. So my plan with the truck is to drive it home. That's 600 miles. And I... Yep, that's some burbling. So maybe this is full. Um, or maybe not. We might have to get some antifreeze. So I think we might do that. Because that was empty. Any washer fluid in there? Yeah, it's got washer fluid. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's that's the plan. Two tires in the front. Fill it up with antifreeze, send it. 600 miles, we'll see if we make it home. Uh, st <laughs> Stay tuned, because that'll be coming up in the, uh, later on in the video. So look at these tires I got. They are very nice. One has a date code of 19, one has a date code of 21. Um, they're 245.70s instead of 245.75, but they're going in the front, and it's two-wheel drive, so it's not going to matter. Um, I'm not going to be able to get you in here. Um, so anyway, I was about to take it to get the tires changed, and, well, now it's full, but, um, yeah, there's no transmission fluid on the dipstick when it's running. So I'm going to go see if I can go get a couple quarts of transmission fluid, pop them in here, and then drive it and go uh, get the tires done. All right, so I just uh, dumped a couple quarts of Valvoline Max Life in there, my go-to transmission fluid. It's like 22 bucks a gallon at Walmart, if you can find it, because it seems to be very popular and all kinds of people are grabbing it. Um, so I'm going to take a look underneath. I didn't see any transmission fluid leaks. I mean, everything, oh, what is that? What is that right there? Oh. Yes, well, I don't know how bad it's leaking. I might have to go to the backyard, but uh, yeah, she's a little wet. All right, so here we go. We're uh, coming along for the first ride. First thing we notice the transmission shifts. I'm gonna see how bad the freaking steering wheels. I don't know if you can see how bad the steering wheel is moving, but it's shaking pretty good. It does seem to go fairly straight. Pulls a little bit to the left. Oh, these tires are so bad. I'm really hoping it, it rides better with the new tires. So I think I know why these tires were shaking the front end so bad. Let's roll it around a little bit here. Oh, there's some cordage that we saw before, I think. The other one doesn't seem to be so bad. It's got some weird bald spots in it, but... Not like, not like what we're about to see. Oh yeah, take a look at that. Uh, I was surprised it made it here. But those are the tires that were on it. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Uh, this time we're not gonna turn the camera. Um, Cause if you turn the camera, the video doesn't turn and then you guys are looking at everything sideways. So this is our 2000 Ford Ranger that we just bought. Uh, well, not really just bought. Um, I replaced the front tires already. And you'll see, this is gonna get inserted 
in between the other video so um, you'll see the bad tires that are on it and these are the new ones um, the backs are flat they keep going flat um, I haven't had a chance to look at it but I'm gonna pump some air in there and the tires themselves look good so what I'm hoping is it's just a valve stem like the the core of the valve stem I think that seals bad so we come around um, you'll see massive amounts of rust I mean this thing is you get let me see if I can yeah it's flapping the whole bed pretty much so if I was to drive this back I think I'm gonna have to put a toe strap around the bed and strap the bed down um, yeah we got you know typical New York truck it's got rust all over the place the thing runs fantastic though um, it's the XL model which has the vinyl seats uh, no no console uh, it's like a I don't know you can't even fit a third person in there um, but I'm sure you'll see later 124,000 miles and I got to change batteries in the camera, so I'll be right back. All right, so we got the back tires aired up. Uh, we moved it a little bit. Uh, we do know there is a transmission fluid leak, so it didn't move very far, just from over there to over here. Um, but this tire here, we know what the problem is. It is the valve core. It's leaking. You can hear it. So we're going to take this core out and put a new core in. We've got our core tool. All you do is stick this in here, spin that out, grab a new one, pop it in, spin it in, tighten it, and it should be done. Um, I'm by myself, so yeah, you're not going to be able to see it. And just like that, in a matter of a few seconds, we've got our core replaced. No more leaks. I'll call that a success. Now, I'm still not sure if I'm driving this home or if I'm going to put it on the trailer. I probably should put it on the trailer. Um, just because... I mean, I'm adventurous, but... Let's take a look at this 2000 Ford Ranger. Uh, what we have here is a extended cab. 3 liter automatic. Um, gray interior is kind of. Eh, it's seen better days. Got an annoying dinger. Uh, it does not have a sliding rear window, which I was hoping it did. Uh, back looks okay. Tailgate's got some dents, but I believe. You guys may remember the 2000 Ranger I have up in New York where the bed's all flapping and it's just kind of frames getting ready to crack in half. So I got this to um, take the engine and trans out and take my other one and put in here. Now this truck's only got 153,000 miles on it, which is not a lot. Uh, but it's got bad head gaskets. I did have it running for, I don't know, probably about 40 seconds, get it off the trailer and over here. And when I shut it off, you can see the uh, bubbles in the coolant reservoir. So, telltale sign of head gaskets. Um, oil looks clean. So I'm not sure. I, I don't believe any coolant is making it into the cylinders. So, who knows? We may end up tearing this motor down and putting new head gaskets in it. Uh, but it does run, does drive, and if nothing else, I'll have an extra transmission for something. But that is it for the introduction of the 2000 Ford Ranger. What I might do is... Add this video to one of the other. Nah, never mind. Anyway, uh, let's see what we got here. 
We got paperwork for I don't know what. what we got here. This is um. Now we got some tires. And we got an inspection. Do we have any books? Oh, owner's manual. That's nice. Um, USAA, the same insurance company I'm with. This is probably more... Firestone for... Yep, tires. Okay. Then we got some junk. Um, hmm. A fuse there, that's interesting. I haven't tried the radio or anything yet. Because the battery's so dead. Oh, come on. All right, I'm gonna try to work on this third door. My battery's dead, so time to change batteries. Oh, you barely hear it. You definitely see it, though. Yep, definitely head gaskets, but more concerning, we're doing some mosquito fogging out here. So I don't know. I think we're gonna pull this in and maybe see if we can get the heads off and see if anything's in the motor should be good, but I don't know with that much smoke. I don't, As you can see, just that short amount of time we've had some visitors. It didn't take them long to get in here, never does. I mean it's all down in there. So I'll probably get the vacuum cleaner. Vacuum this all out out here. Uh, yep, yeah, there's a pressure and radiator. All right. I don't think there's too much fluid in there. So, <coughs> I wasn't going to drain that before we pulled it in. May not have to, but I'm going to crack the drain plug anyway. And then just uh, push it in. But while it's out here, I'm going to get the vacuum cleaner, see if we can. Get this stuff cleaned up. All right, so we brought the Green Ranger in. We're gonna try to pull the heads off. So, I should say this is the clean Green Ranger. I also have a rusty Green Ranger. But this is a clean one, extended cab. Um, So you held it. All right, there. So, yeah, keep an eye on the, all these bolts and stuff. About ready to throw you guys on the tripod. So, with that, all we're going to do now is. We're gonna loosen this, we're gonna take the air hose off. Um, probably take the radiator hose off, get that out of the way. Um, heater hoses, we'll probably disconnect them from the firewall and over here, get them out of the way. Okay, I wanted to show you this was pretty interesting. I don't know what is going on here. I, I'm not even gonna ask. Oh, uh, all right, let's uh, get this air hose off. Done this in. I mean, the math is probably okay because it wasn't throwing any check engine lights. Or maybe it was. Heck, I don't remember. Okay, Ugh. unplug the math, take the air box off. Um, yeah, undo the spark plug wires, take the whole coil system out, get that out of the way. This bracket I know has got to come off. The exhaust is cut right there, so I don't have to worry too much about that. 
Might be able to get the heads off with the exhaust attached. Don't even have to worry about pulling it. <laughs> so that is probably mouse pee that has corroded on there because I took the air box out and when I lifted the filter, oh, maybe that's why we didn't get no power. Can't get no air. Holy cow. Let me grab the vacuum and clean all those out. <laughs> oh, that's a classic. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to disconnect the vacuum line from this, this yellow from the EGR. And then it wraps around to the back and the other side. La, 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 la. And it goes right into there. So we disconnect that, get that out of the way, get that connector out of there, that one out of there. Get rid of the coils. Um, and other things, get this intake out of here. Especially the main main harness plug here. And we got some, some more exhaust and stuff, so. Yeah, let's keep plugging away. I'm gonna leave the AC on. Leave the power steering pump on. Oh, I can't. Ah, oh, because they're bolted to the head. Oh. All right. Oh, well, wait, wait, maybe. Maybe I can get the head off there. We'll see. All of the valve covers are studs except for that one right there and that one right there. All the rest of these long things. So let's get the valve covers off. Then we got the valve cover off on this one side. And you can see there's definitely water mixing with the oil over here. And those things are solid. Oh my gosh. Well, the good thing is we can... Maybe? But we won't crank it over. We'll see if we can get a something on the crank pulley maybe. And see if these things are actually working. Look how rusted they are. But, I mean, the engine did run, so I guess there's that. I mean, no power, but it did run. Hmm. Let's see here. We got for head bolts. One, two, three, four along the bottom. And one. Interesting. Oh, well, we're going to take the intake off too. So we got those torques there. We'll uh, pull the fuel injector rails out, pull the intake off. Once we get the thermostat housing off of there. Actually, that might come with it. Um, now, Lee, do we dare go to this side? Yeah, I realized I had never checked the oil on this thing. He told me it had a bad head gasket, and I just went with it. So I pulled the dipstick out. It's chocolate milkshake the whole way through. So I think I got all of the intake bolts out. And on these, I believe there's one, but you have to take the rocker off because because you can't get, uh, I'm gonna just take all these head intake bolts out and then we'll try it. I know on the older ones, there's like one piece of the intake that goes around one of the rockers or one of the uh, push rods. And there's no way to get it out. So you have to take the rocker off, take the push rod out, and then you can get the intake off. That's a pretty stupid design if you ask me. But no one's asking me, so. All right. Grab these four. These were T45, by the way. All right. This back here, that is your K45. 
cam synchronizer that drives the oil pump. I did have a 3.0 that was totally locked up because the cam synchronizer had seized up and snapped the gear and no oil pressure. Yeah, what was it got here? Oh, it's in the back. I don't know if you can see it way back there. On both sides. Yeah, you can see that. I think you can see it. Maybe not. Anyway. Yeah, we got to take this rocker off for sure. And probably one on the other side too. But... Well, this is where we're going to stop for the night. Um, yeah, we got chocolate milk, chocolate milkshake all over the place. So, next step, um, I'm going to pull the rockers and push rods out and see if we can. not This head will definitely come off right now. And I th think. That one will not. I think that one's got some stuff still bolted to it. But at least we can get one of them off and take a look. Um, I'm actually thinking that this might have been run for a while. And the reason it has no power is because with the lack of lubrication, it rounded off the cam lobes. Don't know for sure. Um, or if it's just because the head gasket's so bad, it just has no compression. That's why it's... Hmm, that's why it's so far down on power. What I really hate to do is get the heads done, put new gaskets in, put it all back together, and say, oh boy, truck still has no power. Guess what? Hmm, especially when I got a low mileage motor coming down next week. So here we are at the New York house, and... Got a truck and a trailer, and the trailer is dripping, so I wonder what's in there. Oh, this thing is dis disgusting. It's, ugh. I can't wait to get this thing back home to Virginia and power wash the trailer because it's nasty. how much you're gonna be able to see but we've got the rusty ranger in here with of course both flat back tires of course uh she's strapped down and then we've got metal what in the world could we possibly be doing with metal well this here is what we're going to use to uh, enclose the sides of the carport and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with the front and back end. We may leave them open. We may just enclose the back end, leave the front end open. But we've got that for the sides. Uh, we've got bags of screws, which I'm going to get out of the truck and throw back here because we don't need them in the truck. And then this thing was full of snow. It's almost gone. I should just sweep it out, but it's rolling out of the trailer, so it'll be fine. Good enough. And then uh, I'm going to load this thing up, head out of here Monday, drive back down to Virginia, and unload it, start pulling this motor out. So after what's normally a 10-hour trip turned into a 12-and-a-half-hour trip, we are back with the Rusted Ranger. And if you want to see what... Uh, how rusty it is this is just from just from the ride back look at all the rust this is the metal for the siding on the carport oh can't wait to get that on uh, of course tires are flat so we're gonna air up the tires start it up drive this thing out of here uh, unload it because we loaded it before we put it in the trailer so we could have more room uh, we got a little compressor and uh, let's get this thing loaded oh look at the puppies Mag Gunner and the newest one sailor, way over there. Well, it's the beginning of another beautiful day, I guess. 
Uh, so let's take a look. We got, oh, I didn't show you. We got the uh, engine and transmission pulled out of the extended cab ranger sitting right there. That kind of sucked. And we'll take a look here. You see the starter hanging down. Uh, I think it was easier to unbolt the starter than it was to disconnect it. Uh, so here's what we're looking at. Uh, transmission lines. Um, what I'm going to try to do, what you have to do is you have to set the exhaust in first and then plop the engine in. Um, I am going to do the old put the engine and trans together outside and then plop them together slide them in uh, hopefully that works and first thing I'm gonna do is power wash in here because this is grody we got little squirrels been having a little feast in here same thing in there all right so we got that out of here to make room for this one to go in a single cab and I believe it's going to not start. So let me get the jump box and uh, we'll see if this thing's going to start and move because it does have a transmission fluid leak. Well, I was really upset because I just jumped it and tried to start it like five or six times. It didn't want to stay running. And I knew this motor ran real good. I was like, what's going on? And I remembered I cut a chunk of this vacuum line off for the Jaguar. So I just plugged it with a stick, and we're back to running good. Uh, looks like, sounds like I've got a pulley squeak. I do want to replace both of those pulleys when I put the motor in. Um, I'm going to look at the plugs, you know, all that, all the standard stuff. Alright, well let's see if this thing will move and drive into the carport on its own. If not, we'll have to tow it. Hell, it made it. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> but as you can imagine with that vacuum line unplugged there was no brakes so that was kind of challenging um, uh, so here's a dilemma I found yet another Ranger up in Richmond it's about that's probably about an hour drive maybe an hour and 15 and they say it needs a fuel pump well, it's 1500 bucks for it. It's kind of a lot. But I got a fuel pump right there. So free fix. Put it up for sale for, you know, three grand. I don't know. I'm kind of getting rangered out. And nobody's watching ranger videos, so. Um, I kind of like to keep the 16s, but I think I'm just going to stick with the 15s that are on that one because those tires are really good. So I think we're just going to leave those. And I don't know what we're going to do with these. All right, so we got the single cab Ranger in. Um, just took off the air intake and took this off. And yeah, lo and behold, look what we got again. More Mises. Uh, so we'll vacuum that out. Um, not that we really need it, but we're going to take that out. Well, here's an interesting note. This is not even an XL, just a plain Ranger. I mean, it's so plain. We got the, you've seen it, we got the vinyl bench seats. But what we do have is we got fog lights, which those will be for sale. And this one's got cruise control. Imagine that. That one over there, being an XLT, does not have cruise control. So I don't know what's all involved in putting it in, but I know we're not going to do it. So uh, this whole piece needs to come off. We'll replace that with the one off of the other one. And let's get rid of this cable. We don't need that. Get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. Moving on, hopefully we can uh, hopefully we can disconnect the fuel right down here. That'd make it a lot easier. 
So, yeah, remember when I said I was thinking about driving this thing 600 miles home? Yeah, it's probably a good thing I didn't. Uh, that serpentine belt's just crack splitting. So we're gonna need a new one. So I'm about to take the fan off and you'll see it's just gonna spin. So what you need is something to hold the pulley with. And there's some things I've done before. I've loosened up um, one of the pulley bolts and stuck a screwdriver in there to hold it. Um, and then, digging through my toolbox, I found this. And this is awesome. This is what I just used to take it off the other truck. Um, you just wrap the chain around the pulley, hook it, and it's just like a vice grips. Tighten it up, and it holds the pulley, and you can do whatever you want. Okay. So we've got this set up. Now, I don't know if I can keep you in there. My tripod's not tall enough. So let me just say, uh, sorry for the camera work. Now my 22 millimeter. All right, so I'm gonna lift up on the wrench, push down on the Vice grip, and hopefully I'll get it. Give me a second. Oh, wow. Well, it turns out I needed some extra beef. So I wedged this against the uh, other pulley. And then I did this. I mean, I pulled real hard, but it's loose now. So we're going to go ahead and get this fan out of here. Remember, this is left-hand thread. It even says it right here. Caution, left-hand thread on a 3-liter. All right, well, it's cold out, but I decided to go ahead and uh, drain the transmission fluid out so I can put the, just throw the pan back on and then uh, get ready to, I'm going to try to drop this trans in place and then just pull the engine out. Um, I cannot get the drive shaft out. Uh, none of those bolts want to turn, so I'm going to end up with the uh, torch gonna heat them up and then and then I should be able to take them out but for right now that's it and this this pan leaks it's all rusted I'm sure it's probably rusted through in a couple places so we're just gonna order us a new pan not that I'm using this transmission um, but I'd rather have a nice pan on it when I do put it in storage So when I was taking the pulleys off, um, they're both making noise. So I tried to order a pulley and couldn't do it. Tried researching the part number and no pulley seemed like it was going to work. So I looked up the bearing number and let me get this open. Um, Alright, so this said 6203 I believe is what it said. And we got our, yep, we've got our Timken 6203 right here. Let's pop this open. And it should be sealed on both sides. At least that's what we're hoping anyway. And it sure looks like it is. All right, so what we're going to do now, since we can't get the pulley, we're going to come over here to the press. And we're going to press that old bearing out, press new bearing in. And I have a new pulley coming for the tensioner. I was able to find that one. Okay, so for pressing this out, we've got a one and a 16th uh, deep wall socket. Um, it's a impact socket. And that is just pushing that bearing right out. Probably didn't even need to press. And there we go. Listen to how noisy that thing is. All right, we'll grab our new bearing, which I should have already opened, but I didn't. You can't even hear that one. So pop that on there. And we're gonna go give it a couple little love taps just to get it started, and then we'll press it in. 
All right, let me, uh, let me make some more room here. And probably a little bit more than that even. Come on. All right. Now. Slide this over just a little bit. Make sure we get centered. That's the important thing is getting it centered. You want to be pressing on the metal, not on the seal. And you can probably see that going right in. I mean, piece of cake. Should be bottoming out anytime now. Feels like it's bottoming out. And oh, we bottomed it out all right. We went all the way through. All right, so we're we have to push this back in some. Yeah, I, I thought it was going kind of far. I was like, wait a minute. So let's uh, let's go ahead and push this all the way back in. Helps if you tighten this up. I thought there was a ridge I was going to be able to feel, and the answer to that is nope, there is not. And if I can press it in just with my finger, ah. okay, so here we have the two front, the two back. And I think we're going to be good to go with that. So, this one here. Can't even hear it. That one there you can hear too. So, two bad bearings. Um, good bearing. We're getting somewhere. We got most of the front off. Uh, I'm trying to decide how much of this I'm going to take off. I don't really want to take the intake off, but I probably will just because. And then when I yank the motor out, I think it might be easier that way. We'll see. Well, this is about as far as we got with pulling the Ranger motor out. Um, well, I don't even know how to say this. Um, I just made a deal today, in fact about 10 minutes ago, I got rid of this Ranger and the other Ranger, and I made a trade. And you're going to have to see that one in the next video. Um, the Escape sold, I'm delivering that on Friday night, we're going to go out to dinner and deliver that. And tomorrow they are coming to pick up both of the Rangers and then drop off the trade. So, uh, I guess it's a good thing because it's getting kind of cold out. So, I guess that works in my favor. Let me set the camera down here. Uh, and with that, we bring to a close the video of the two Rangers. Um, don't know what to say. Saves me some work, I guess. Um, but I really like finishing a project and then turning it over to someone else. Um, in this case here, what I'm picking up is a car that I keep saying I'll never have. Um, and lo and behold, this is going to be the first one. I never thought I'd have a Jaguar either, but here we are. So, that being said, Hope you uh, enjoyed following along with the videos, even though it had kind of a surprise ending. And keep the wheels down, and always remember to keep your wrenches in motion. All right, you can't really see it, but coming down the road, right here.
here. Here's the replacement for the Rangers. Can I zoom in? Maybe?